I had a question from some students about some problems from 2.4. There aren't videos for every question, so I'll just uh, kind of go through some of these and how we get the answer. This first one, just read and look at the chart and interpret their data. The scatter plot below shows a comparison of a calendar of the calendar years from 1993 to 2003 with the average price of a certain commodity in cents per pound. So since it goes from 50 to 70, um, that's cents per pound, and then this is the these are the dates. So it says during which calendar years was the average price of the commodity 62 cents per pound? So here's 62. We go across. Boom. There it is, and it's only in the year 2000. So. There's my, there's my answer, 2000. Okay. Next one, it says during what calendar years uh, was the average price of the commodity 63 cents per pound? So 62, 64, 63 is here in the middle. Go across, boom, boom, those three years. So 2001, 2002, and 2003. It's not 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. And there you go. Yay. Next one, draw a scatter plot for the data following table. So we're going to be using this little pencil. Once I bring the cursor over the table, I get a pencil. And so negative 4 corresponds to 9.4. So right up about here. And then uh, negative 3 corresponds to 6.2. So right about there. Negative 2 corresponds to 4.6. It's a little more than half, right about there. That's not it. Let's see. How do I clear something off? I can just drag it. Okay. It's right about there. Uh, negative 1 corresponds to 2.7. So right about there. This one had, I do have a little concern that. This one can be really picky if you don't hit the right pixel. Zero corresponds to 2.1, so just over two. Man, I, think I need to calibrate my mouse or something. And then when we have one corresponds to 1.1. And then two corresponds to 0.7. 3 corresponds to 0.5, 4 corresponds to 0.6, so it rose a little bit. And 5 corresponds to 0.2. So that's basically what they're looking for this one. If you get this one wrong, let me know, and I'm happy to uh, give you credit if you're close to this, because uh, drawing things on a graph aren't, isn't always the most precise thing. Okay, moving on. This one here, still no video. Create a scatter plot, plot to show the relationship between the variables x and y. So when x is seven, y is three. So x being seven, y being three, is right about there. Then one corresponds to four. Five corresponds to six. Three corresponds to one. 4 corresponds to 2. There you go. Okay, next one. Um, same thing. We're going to just do a scatter plot. So I'm not going to keep doing these. I'm hoping you see this. These the X's. These are the Y's. First quiz, second quiz. And another, uh, this one says, plot the points in the grid, then sketch the line that's a line that best fits the data. Oh, this one has a video, so I'll let you look at the video for that. So now we're on to some linear regression. Use a linear regret use linear regression, excuse me, to find the equation for the linear function that best fits the data. So we have 179, 2106, 3120, 4143. 5, 171, and 6, 191. So let's see what the calculator that they give us. Okay, it's Desmos. This is really handy that it's all in the same screen. So what I'm going to do is do a data input. So do table, and then I'll do 1 corresponds to 79, 
2 corresponds to 106. 3 corresponds to 120. And what you're not seeing over here, I think if I do that, it's going to take over the whole screen. Let me just get all the data in first. 4 corresponds to 143. 5 corresponds to 171. And 6 corresponds to 191. Okay, so I got the data in there. And I'm going to go back to here now. Let's see if I can expand this. Not really. Okay. What we really need to do is look down here because everything's positive for X's and then the Y's are way up there. See those dots way up there? That's where they are. So we could change our setting and have our X's go from zero to six. Say zero to seven, just give it a buffer. And then our Y's are gonna go from they go from 79 up to 191, so the Ys will just, um, let's first look at this at zero to 200 and see what happens. Okay, so there, there's your data. And you can definitely see a line out of that. So if you wanna get the equation for the line, this is how we do it. We say this is a linear equation. So remember what a linear equation is. Y1, and that's referencing the Y1 up here. And I do this shift tilde thing. Now on my keyboard, it's right next to the one. It's to the left of the one key. So I got that. And then it's going to be MX1 plus B. And there it is. Now, it wasn't necessarily trying to draw a line that's going to be within those well i should say it is because it's using this data but it happened these are these two graphs are graphed independently but you my point is the equation it came up with did a pretty good job graphing that line so our slope is 22.2286 and our intercept is 57.2 so i'd put does it say round to so many? Two places, okay. So y equals 22.23x plus 57.2. Okay, that should be our equation. Look at that. See how that, okay. Um, let's see. And this one has a video, but it's kind of the same thing. You're going to put this in decimals to graph it. Here's your calculator down below. And then you're going to come up with that equation, and then you're going to plug in some data point questions. And this is a pretty biased question, talking about automatic weapons. Um, their automatic weapons are not that common. 13,000 automatic weapons, um, no, that's just not, I don't think there's that many, whatever. So I'm not gonna get political here, but um, that's a pretty biased question. Okay, uh, capacity and price for a collection of USB flash drives is displayed. Oh, there's a video for this one. So it's gonna be the same type of thing. You're gonna do your X, your Y, then you come up with your equation Y1 equals MX1 plus B. And then this one here, what type model is best for this? So this looks pretty linear, so I'd say linear. And this looks non-linear. It's got a curve to it. And that's definitely got a curve to it. Uh, regression models run to determine to do. Results are used just to predict the number of sit-ups a person would do. So it's going to be going to be y equals one negative one point two three x plus twenty two point seven nine. And this R means it's a pretty good likelihood that that's accurate. Uh, from there, you would plug in the four, and then you'll get the, get the answer. So it'll be Y equals 
negative 1.23 times 4 plus 22.79. And this one, another, okay, so you need to come up with the equation. Uh, you basically go off the graph. So 102 is around here, and where, where would the person be? And then you can interpret that way. Go to the line, and it looks like it's just below 60. We come up with 55. So, like if you would have come up with like 57, it would have been close enough. Okay, and then because it took plus or minus 5. And then this last one, again, you're going to come up with your regression equation using decimals. And then you come up, you put in your correlation, correlation coefficient is it above or below. That's your R squared, the R. And then um, what does the model predict the price to be? You plug in this amount of money to get the demand. And then this is going the other direction. So in this case, you would set the equation equal to 186,900. So let's see. Uh, this, I know this video is getting long. People don't like long videos. But uh, once you have the equation here, you would set that equation equal to this 186,900. I think it's just 186.9. And then you would... Um, solve for the price. I don't think I can write on this screen with my pen. Yeah, and you'd end up getting 209. So, okay, well, I hope this helps. If you need some more clarification, please reach out to me.